We found the second oldest pub in Chicago and went in for an early evening beer, uh, and it turned out to be a pretty interesting place. We'll tell you the history of the bar and what you can expect going into Casey's Tavern right now. I'm Adam. We're the couple behind In the Great Wide, and we go to Illinois a couple times a year. It's fairly frequently to go through Chicago, actually, to visit some family in Rockford. Uh, and on our last trip, we did a day trip over to Chicago to actually spend time in Chicago. Yeah, it was great. Uh, we spent some time at Millennium Park, which is really cool. Uh, we spent some time at The Bean, which was really cool. It's your first time seeing uh, it. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. I've been through Chicago so many times. I've never spent any time in downtown Chicago. I don't know why. Uh, and we ended the day uh, of in that area at the Shedd Aquarium, which was really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it was a much larger aquarium, I think, than either of us were expecting. Yeah. It doesn't look like a big building, but there's a lot of levels and there's a lot going on in there. Yeah. But from there, we took a short bus ride, um, or you could do a long walk um, over to the historic uh, Printer's Row neighborhood, which is in the South Loop. So it's kind of like in between like where the bean is and where the Shedd Aquarium is. Yeah, just in, in a little bit from the mm -hmm. lake. Uh, the Printing House Road District was des designated a National Historical Landmark in 1976. Uh, the Printer's Road neighborhood and the Printer's Printing House Road District are technically two different things, but they overlap. And uh, the, the actual district was designated a National Historical Landmark. It was a cool neighborhood yeah. to walk around in. Um, and the building that Casey's Tavern sits in has had a bar in it since the 1880s. Yeah, the long time. A lot of different bars, a lot of different owners. At mm -hmm. one point it was George's Busy Bee. Then it was Chester's Lounge. And then it was Bernie's 701 Club. Mm. Mm -hmm. But Casimir Weglars? Sure. Is that how you say it? <laughs> yes. Weglars um, bought it and renamed it Casey's Tavern in 1974. Uh, in that regard, Casey's Tavern is not exactly the second oldest bar in Chicago. Uh, but it's been the space that's housed a bar for 140 years. Yeah. So it's a really old bar bar. Yeah, it just wasn't always named Casey's Tavern. Yeah, the space has always been used as a bar. That's why it was opened. It's just changed hands mm -hmm. quite a bit. So the space itself has the second oldest liquor license in Chicago. Uh, when Weglars bought the business, he, the building had just been newly renovated into apartments in 1974. They, they knew that the printing district area, which still, there's still a lot of printers there, but it was uh, a more dying art form even in the early 70s, and so they were turning the giant buildings into apartment uh, complexes. Yeah. yeah, and so started the gentrification process. <laughs> yep. Um, but Wugglers uh, wanted a bar that would be a slower pace than his other properties that he owned because at the time he owned the most popular nightclub uh, in Chicago, but he was about to turn 60. Yeah. So he was uh, looking for somewhere that he could just like hang out and have a slower pace. Yeah. The bar served all of the blue collar printing workers that were in the neighborhood. The current owner, Bill White, bought it from Weglars in 1986. And he had the idea to like keep it the blue collar printers uh, bar that it was during the day. But then at night it turned into like a more hip bar uh, to serve the younger clientele that was moving into the neighborhood um, as more and more of the buildings were being converted into apartments. What's so interesting about this place is that it ended up having two separate identities with completely different clientele, depending on the time of day you happen to visit Casey's. Yeah, I thought that that was really interesting yeah. just to learn about their history. Um, and it almost has like an English pub kind of feel with like dark wood, um, like bar yeah, and chairs yeah. and tables and everything. Um, and they also have a respectable whiskey collection. We both felt very at home there. We both love English pubs. And so it definitely had that feel and it was very warm and welcoming as, as we came in. Yeah, and they have over 130 beers available, um, 38 of which are on tap. 38, that's a lot. It's a, it's a, a good lot. number of beers, yeah, for sure. 
They um, do have a lot of local craft beers from the Chicago and surrounding areas, a lot of Illinois. There's a lot of craft breweries popping up outside of Chicago in like the more rural areas. So they, they're serving a lot of those beers as well. Mm -hmm. But they do have beers from all over the yes, world. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, international, everything. I mean, they, they have 130 beers. It's it's a lot to be taken just from the Chicago area. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I did see that, like, according to some Yelp reviews, they do actually also serve pizza. Like, oh. a lot of people are saying, like, it's frozen pizza. <clears throat> um, but, like, we didn't see any food options. This isn't a spot that you really go to for food. It's You go there to drink yeah. beer and sometimes yeah. cocktails. There's plenty of other places around the area to go get good food. Yeah. <laughs> it's downtown Chicago. There's good pizza. There's there's good Italian beef. There's good hot dogs. There's good everything. Uh, you don't need a bar to serve you food. Yeah. Um, and it is kind of like a sports bar yeah. kind of mixed in with that English pub vibe. Um, they do ha obviously have a lot of like Chicago um, sports flags and yeah. stuff up for their different teams, um, but they didn't hate us that no, <laughs> not, no, not they... being from Chicago. <clears throat> Chicago is a very sports town, uh, so they definitely serve that, but they were more than willing to like, oh, you know, you follow the Dodgers. Okay, we'll turn the game on. It wasn't a big deal. They yeah. were just happy that people were there and that you wanted to hang out and have a good time. Yeah, um, but they do have about 10 TVs, so it you know it's kind of like a sports bar. You can go yeah. in and watch a game and drink beer. You know? Like half of those TVs when we were there were watching game shows, which was really fun yeah. because everybody really got into it. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's like it's a big open space inside. It would be great for hanging out in any size group, yeah. really, because there are some four top tables up against the bar, but then it's a nice wide open space until you get over to the bar. Yeah. Um, so you could go there with however many people you want and it would be fine. There's also a really nice patio area out front, um, which sat I mean, like a dozen people, maybe a couple dozen people. But it was really nice out. It was full, actually, mm -hmm. when we came in. So we, we couldn't actually sit outside, uh, although we do prefer sitting at the bar. But it was really nice. It was nice that it was out there sitting on, on uh, the street that it's on, but I don't remember the name of at the moment. It's like Dearborn or Dearborn, something? Dearborn. I think that's I, right. Uh, don't anyway. quote me on that. We'll look it up. Um, and they also, inside, they have a modern jukebox, you know, like one of those elect electronic jukebox things that you can go and, like, pay money to control the music in the bar. Um, yeah. So that was kind of uh, good, you know. Yeah, I've been, yeah. We've been seeing a lot of those pop up more and more Yeah, lately. a lot more. You get down with the app, and then you control it from there. You don't have to actually get up. You can hear music you want to hear. It'll tell you when your song is going to play and, like, all that stuff. So yeah. They're, um, they're becoming much more popular. Yeah. But the bartenders, while we were there, were playing a lot of 2000s hip hop, which I remember us sitting there, like, just being like, this is kind of weird. It, yeah. Because it was like an English pub look, but then also a sports bar, but they were playing game shows and they were playing 2000s hip hop music. It was fun. So, it was fun. yeah, it was just like. It was odd, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah. It was a weird balance of things. We were there in the late afternoon. It wasn't busy, but everyone yeah. was super friendly. The bartender suggested some really tasty beers. Uh, the bartender was actually coming off of her shift and going in. A uh, new bartender was coming in. Very happy that we tipped her out at the end. Yeah. Uh, it was it was really nice. Yeah. It definitely has that, like, neighborhood bar vibe because the bartenders obviously knew the other people who were coming in while we were sitting there at the bar. We yeah. watched them, like... Be like, hey, how's yeah. it going? And like, first you know, names, yeah. It yeah. was it was very obvious that they had come in a lot, and that it was great. It it just adds to that cheers kind of feel of like, yeah, you know, you're yeah. there and you hang out, and and they'll appreciate you being there. Yeah. So we highly recommend checking it out the next time you're in downtown Chicago for it, sure. It's affordable. It's down to earth. It's friendly, and it's a piece of Chicago history. And it's in a pretty cool neighborhood that's within walking distance of a lot of the big tourist attractions. Yeah, yeah. It's only a few blocks away from, from a lot of places. Yeah. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you found it helpful or entertaining. Um, we release new videos every Tuesday and Thursday reviewing all kinds of stuff to do from all over the world uh, so you will know what is and is not worth your time when you travel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the Great Wide somewhere.